Well, hello everybody. I'm Louise Eddington. I'm the marketing coordinator for the organization of professional astrology, OPA. And today we are going to be talking to Laura Nalbandian about her track. She's one of the track leaders at the OPA 2021 virtual conference. Um, and you can find details of that and to register at opaastrologyevents.org or it will be in the details below. So Laura is going to be um, create, uh, running a three day track on exploring the moon, mapping your lunar landscape, and it will be one of the recorded tracks. So Laura, would you like to tell us a bit about your track and why you chose it and whatever else you want to tell us? Certainly. Uh, I have been working with a theory around the moon, certainly based on good astrological, uh, our understanding of the moon, which is that the moon represents how we comfort ourselves, how we nurture ourselves. And I came up with this concept of how we cope under emotional stress. You know, the little daily stresses that we have from that moment where you're five minutes running late to a doctor's appointment and you can't find your keys to the big stresses. And while I was thinking about this for this uh, track for OPA's event, I was thinking, well, what bigger event have any of us really lived through modern times that we've been here than what we are experiencing now? Certainly with the pandemic, <clears throat> the inordinate, heartbreaking, mind-boggling, so crushing, number of people who have passed and are continuing to pass on the planet, mm -hmm. whether that is someone, uh, it is someone we know personally, which I've lost uh, a family member to uh, COVID, to having family members, um, uh, my niece uh, and her family, uh, while pregnant with twins had COVID. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, so whether one is experiencing it, whether even if one doesn't have the loss or a neighbor or a family member who's been sick, we are immersed in this global experience. Mm -hmm. Fear, stress every day, uh, at times severely locked down or depending on what city or state you live in, <clears throat> whatever the rules might be, not able to engage with your friends, mm -hmm. possibly not even able to engage with your family. It's a stressful time. Oh yeah. <laughs> Right, and then even outside of that, we live on planet Earth, mm -hmm. right? We're, we are human beings who have incarnated onto a very unsettled place. And if you just look at history, it's an unsettled place with the potentiality for many stressful things to happen on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. So the moon represents a day-to-day -day function Right, so these are the day-to-day -day experiences that we have, <clears throat> small and large. And based on my theory and based on the fact that I'm an evolutionary astrologer and focus on understanding or trying to understand where I believe the soul is coming from and what the soul carries into this lifetime mm. via the moon, <clears throat> pardon me, and the south node, the lunar south node, we are carrying with us habit patterns from the past, habit patterns that are functional, that are healthy. Mm -hmm. And then we have emotional patterns and habit patterns that the soul has developed as a way of coping with emotional trauma and emotional stress. Mm -hmm. And then in, in, in an incarnation, such as you and I incarnating into this lifetime and every other century being incarnating, we and humans particularly, Somewhere in our early childhood, probably before the age of three, some minor or major event happens that triggers or re-triggers some of those patterns to re-engage. Yeah. It yeah. could be as simple as dropping your teddy outside your crib and unable to get it, mm -hmm. right? That thing that gives you comfort. It could be the first time a child we wake up and mommy and daddy are nowhere to be seen and a child doesn't know mommy's just in another room. All they know, all we know is mommy's gone. Yeah. 
So there is a stress moment that is normal and natural. I'm not talking about the abnormal ones. I'm talking about the regular normal things that we as small beings would experience that would trigger the and kick in the moon mm -hmm. in terms of its emotional patterns and how it copes with the stress. Because the psyche says, ooh, that was difficult. I never want that to happen again. I don't want to feel that again. How will I comfort myself? How will I soothe myself in that moment? And how will I cope with future moments and future mm -hmm. events so that I don't feel this again? So from the little physical things that we do, from rocking, tapping, twirling hair, biting fingernails, those are all little habits that we do. And then we have more probably obvious and more dominant uh, patterns that we pull in to cope. And each moon has these strategies. Mm -hmm. Each moon placement, just simply by sign, will give us cues and clues into what are the, the ways that the, the individual copes with emotional stress? And then how do we transition from just coping, soothing ourselves to actual emotional integration? Mm. I think it's such a useful track, not only for the people who would be attending, but you know, as astrologers to help with their clients afterwards, because it's it has, you know, I have a Gemini moon in the sixth and I've thrown myself into my work <laughs> and information gathering completely learning new skills <laughs> you know, and all those sound perfectly <laughs> wonderful don't they yeah. there's nothing wrong with them it's how we use them how exactly. we use that right and so yeah. we're trying to soothe ourselves and yeah. deal with stress in the best way we feel we can and they are adapted from a very infantile place mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So how do we mature that emotional response? Yeah. To using that moon in the sixth house in a way that really serves you. I am, thankfully. I chose to. I consciously chose exactly. to. Exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So, you know, um, Laura has quite a few places left on her track. So, you know, some of the tracks are filling up. So if you um you know, a lot of people have struggled through this pandemic, understandably, you know, and even though I've thrown myself into my work, of, you know, clearly I'm from the UK and I can't fly back to England to visit my family. So, you know, there's all these emotional responses and things as well. And uh, that goes to the sign on the fourth house, by the way, for me. So yes, absolutely. <laughs> so we, will, we will be looking not only at the moon, and the dispositor of the moon, the planet that rules the sign it's in, along with, of course, the house. We'll be looking at the dispositor and aspects to the moon, aspects to the dispositor, and vitally the fourth house, because I'm a big believer in looking at those house cusps. And for, mm -hmm. for me, the fourth house is super important in this process. And it shows us deeper levels of our emotional patterns, because the moon placement can be the most obvious thing that we see. Yeah. And the fourth house it, are the elements that are more subterranean and more and possibly even more deeply embedded yeah. uh, and not shown to other people. You know, we guard them and 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 keep them safe. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, we'll be looking at that as well. So there's lots of material to look at. Uh, and so, as you have so aptly stated, not only will it be useful, hopefully, for those who attend the track but then useful skills in client work. Yeah. So, I mean, I fun, you know, I'm not a therapist. I don't attempt to be a therapist. I am uh, an advisor, uh, a coach. And if I can give simple tools, and that's what I'm seeking, right? Mm -hmm. Simple tools, something that people can grasp easily, something they don't feel they have to climb some hurdle or attend a uh, a session with me every month or every week or whatever. And I'm not saying, and certainly therapy is a benefit mm. for, for people. And, and I do encourage people to do that. But as an astrologer for me, right, I can give simple tools for people to access uh, as, a way, as a way of finding more emotional nurturing for themselves and more emotional integration. I agree. And I think this would give simple coping skills 
to to help people who are not coping so we say so <laughs> yeah again yeah you're right we're not therapists but but we but we you know we've learned a little bit along the way so <laughs> we have, we have and, and i think we provide um valuable service for folks who are looking for that and being so having so much earth in my own chart i love to give simple usable strategies for people to enact in their lives try them out see how it works see where it where it takes you yeah and you know just at 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 another level to those listening these tracks i've i've experienced this myself through opa before they're they're intense and um, deeply meaningful. And you also bond with a very small group that you're in over the three days. So um, they're very unique to the OPA conferences. And um, I've got great memories of the one track I experienced uh, when we did it in person. And uh, having done some work with OPA on Zoom because of the pandemic, I can say they translate just as well um, to the online presence. So there's room left in Laura's track. So mm-hmm. sign up today, get registered. Um, she's a great teacher, I can tell you. Um, yeah. um, I met her through OPA and um, you were a mentor in um, an eye astrologer for me. Definitely. I don't know if you remember. Yeah. And um, I still remember some of the words she said in my head, you know, it's uh, she's a great teacher, a great leader, a great teacher, a mentor. I do, I, I do want to say about the recordings for those who have any concern about it being recorded, that these recordings are only for those who attend yeah I just want I want to make that very clear but it's what is the value in that is because we're doing individual chart work it's hard to remember all of that it is yeah and And having the recording of it is of of value and it's only those that attend that track it's only those that attend that track will get the recording no one else yeah well thanks Laura for joining me today lovely to see you again (laughs) Oh, it was a pleasure. Thank you for taking the time to do this. I appreciate it. Thanks.